All right, now that we have a nice visualization that describes our data uh, and the distribution of it, what we can do is come up with a data pre-processing plan. So let's um, create a new section here and we'll just call it data pre-processing with recipes. And we'll include the four dashes so it shows up in our outline. And let's just um, uh, take a moment and kind of walk down through a plan. Okay, so what I've done is I've copied and pasted the seven steps that are recommended for data pre-processing. So that's impute, transformations, uh, discretize, dummy variables, interaction variables, uh, and engineered features, normalization, and then multivariate transformations. So what we can do is talk about each one of these individually and then adjust them as uh, we our needs for um, our data based on what the visualization is showing us. So uh, imputing is really not going to be uh, needed for us because we don't really have any missing values. Um, there might be some outliers, for example, that we might want to check on, but realistically speaking, I'm not a big fan of removing outliers unless they're like really throwing off the analysis. So what we can do, though, is take a look at our features and instead replace this step with um, evaluating the non, uh, what, or what we'll call zero variance features. So, um, so I'm going to actually remove input and replace that with zero variance features. And I'm going to put some dashes behind it so it shows up in our outline. Okay, so zero variance features, what they are are things like employee count where there's just one variable that um, really isn't going to add any, any value to the model. So we can actually remove those. Um, the same thing with over 18 and we see that with standard hours as well. So that'll be the first step is actually taking care of the zero variance features. The next one, um, what we can do is actually um, take a look at some transformations. The thing that is beneficial here is to look for is primarily target skewness. So what we're looking for in our histogram is things like um, like you can see with age how this is, has a nice bell shape so it looks uh, relatively normal there might be a little bit of skewness but it's it's not that bad um, daily rate is fine because it has more of a uniform distribution uh, so that'll be easy for a machine learning algorithm to pick up um, or a correlation analysis i should should say because that's the ultimate goal here uh, to pick up but then you have features like distance from home where you have a lot of people that live relatively close and then a few people that are spread out amongst uh, 10 and 30. So you can see this is the majority of the population and it's creating this skew here. Well, what we want to do is we want to try and even that out and, cre and create like a nice bell-shaped curve. So uh, we'll assess the skewness and there's, a, and there's several variables and we'll go uh, through some ways to, to, to pick those out. Discretize, that's not really going to be beneficial for us. Um, it's, it actually ends up hurting uh, correlations uh, in a lot of cases. So I'm not a, I'm not a fan of, of binning continuous variables, uh, which is what discretize means. So we're going to actually just take this one out. Okay. Um, dummy variables is uh, a, a good step however what i prefer to do is actually normalize the uh, data first before i do my dummy variable and, and the reason i do this so i'm going to actually replace this with scaling um, instead of normalization i, I call it um, center and scaling and that'll be the third step that we that we do so the reason I do that before dummying is because the um, I don't want to have the dummy variables scaled, uh, and I, and I can easy it's more easy to pick out just the not the numeric variables that I want to have centered and scaled before we dummy. 
Okay, and then the fourth step, dummying, that is um, a, a good step for us uh, because we do have some factors or categorical data, so we'll include that. And then the last two um, we're going to leave out of this analysis. Um, interaction variables is, is more of an advanced topic, um, and it's something that uh, it's really honestly um, not super necessary because we can get a pretty good model out of uh, the data that we, we have currently in, in its current form. Um, and then multivariate transformations. Uh, this is something that, again, PCA is really not necessary for our particular situation. We don't have an overabundance of features. Uh, we do have some that you know, might be highly correlated, but really we're interested in explainability and anything that would hurt that um, would be a problem for us. So we'll, we'll just delete these last two. So the plan, and again, this is for our correlation analysis. This will change um, when we go to do H2O and Lime because uh, those types of modeling algorithms really don't depend. Um, they, they do a lot of that stuff under the hood, so it's not a... Um, uh, essential to go through all of these transformations. However, it is important for the correlation analysis to uh, turn out correctly uh, for us to do these steps. Okay, so this is our plan and we'll end up uh, going through one by one uh, with the recipes package.